Hello everyone, how are you doing? Hope you are doing well. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about two important aspects, two important process of. Uh... In this video, we are going to talk about multiple alleles and polygenic inheritance, and what is the difference between multiple alleles and polygenic inheritance. So this is a genetics lecture, and we are discussing about different topics of genetics in this lecture series. So watch every single lecture of this series to get a clear idea about it. So now we are going to talk about polygenic versus multiple alleles. It's always a big question to the students from you know plus two standards till college level. Then what's the fundamental difference between the two? You know I'll drill down their names. Multiple alleles. So we'll, we'll talk about this first. Multiple alleles. We know that there is for one gene in very simple terms. For one gene we have two alleles, right? This is what we understand. For one gene, we have two alleles. Multiple allele means, is it two allele? No. If it only refers to two alleles, then every single kind of gene, no normal gene and their interpretation will come under this multiple allele, which is not true. So multiple term is only utilized when there are more than two alleles involved in the process. Is that so? The answer is no. There are two alleles involved but the trait that they form is a cumulative effect of those two alleles. Generally, what we understand is let's imagine, let's say a disease uh, is caused by this gene, small a. Small a is a disease causing, causing gene, okay? So let me write disease causing uh, allele. So it's a recessive allele caused the disease. The dominant allele is capital A, which does not cause any disease. Now, if an individual with capital A, capital A, we call it healthy. Isn't it? If an individual with capital A small a, as there are two different alleles here, one capital A, one small a, so one faulty allele, one healthy allele, so this individual will also be healthy. But if an individual carries both small a, small a, both recessive alleles, it will be diseased. Okay? So among these three different genotypes, capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, and small a, small a, we only understand that this small a small individual will be impacted but these two individuals are phenotypically will be the same they have only difference in their they are different in terms of their genotype but not in phenotype <clears throat> so this is how regular mendelian inheritance pattern follows but in case of multiple alleles we say it's non mendelian inheritance it does not follow mendelian inheritance so what do we mean by this multiple allele is in very simple words i'll take a different color now imagine blood type or blood grouping what happens is that small i means the absence of that particular antigen okay and i a means presence of a antigen i b means presence of b antigen okay so now we'll understand this process even details so what we need to know that if you have i a i a or we have i a i this is the situation this will lead to blood type a no issue with that if we have i b i b or i b small i it will lead to b blood type and if it has i a i b what will happen and if it has small i small i what would happen this is our question so as per Mendel inheritance pattern, among A and B, these two alleles, they have different response. One should be dominant, one should be recessive. So in the heterozygous state, that is IA, IB, the dominant allele will show its effect as per the regular Mendelian inheritance. So this is the heterozygous for that. But in this case, it's supposed to give us either A or B, whatever or whichever is the dominant form. But in this case, they are not dominant. Neither A is complete dominant or not, nor B is complete dominant. So they are not properly dominant. They are incomplete in terms of dominance. So this is the effect of incomplete dominance. And what we see, we see completely different effect, completely different phenotype that is AB blood type. And the fourth one, neither as A nor as B. So automatically, the fourth one, must not provide us any uh, <clears throat> in this case also it will 
it generally give us a phenotype right that is a recessive kind but in this case it's giving us a different phenotype of o blood type which is totally different so what we are seeing is that in this case we have i a i b which is normally heterozygous supposed to give us uh, the dominant phenotype but in this case we are getting completely different phenotype a third phenotype and when we have small i small i neither a nor b are present so they this provides as the recessive phenotype should provide as recessive phenotype as per regular mendelian inheritance but it's not providing any of that it has a completely different phenotype of blood type o so in case of mendelian inheritance we have either dominant phenotype or recessive phenotype to show so with two alleles the resultant phenotypes are two remember that from two alleles there are two phenotype in a mendelian inheritance but in case of incomplete dominance we have two alleles but it's showing four different phenotype so it's not likely the multiple allelic inheritance means more than two alleles no there are two alleles but they have a cumulative impact which can be visible in the phenotype of the offspring and there will be more than two variety of the phenotype that we can see there that is the idea of multiple alleles example human blood typing abo blood type as well as that is example of incomplete dominance where neither a nor b allele is totally or fully dominant apart from that we'll talk about polygenic inheritance now what is polygenic inheritance on the other hand the polygenic inheritance all right so now we are going to talk about the polygenic inheritance so what is the polygenic inheritance and where polygenic inheritance differs from the incomplete dominance or that is the multiple allelic inheritance polygenic the term says poly gene means more than one gene involved in the process of this kind of inheritance that's why they are termed as polygenic inheritance okay so in polygenic inheritance what we know is that more than one gene is involved So, if more than one gene, so obviously there will be more than two alleles because one gene corresponds to two alleles. So, if three genes are involved, so in in in, in, in you know approximately six alleles are involved in the process of this polygenic inheritance. In polygenic inheritance also, the multiple alleles or reality more alleles are involved, and all these alleles that are involved, they have a cross talk with each other. They have a cumulative effect. with each other but apart from this cumulative effect there is also environmental impact environmental impact on those genes are visible that's why in case of polygenic inheritance not only more than one gene that is present and there are multiple alleles that interact with each other to give us the phenotype but also as a resultant phenotype environment shows its own impact the temperature the ph the salinity the acidity the the air atmospheric content everything matters inside this polygenic inheritance the example of polygenic inheritance most of the human traits that are visible are polygenic inheritance for example the skin color is a polygenic inheritance the eye color is polygenic inheritance height polygenic inheritance right intelligence polygenic inheritance all of these are polygenic inheritance where multiple genes are always interacting with each other and multiple genetic interaction along with environmental impact all together gives us the particular phenotypic expression so you can take a screenshot to understand the difference between polygene and multiple allele i'll move on to the next slide and stating you what is the overall idea in this polygenic inheritance is in this polygenic inheritance let's assume there are three genes involved here capital a capital b capital c all in the dominant alleles small a small b small c all are recessive alleles so these three genes and the combination of effects shown by these three genes and their impact leads to the skin color let's assume we are talking about skin color okay and let's also assume that this capital a b c if everything is present in the dominant form it will give us the darkest skin color and the small one will give us 
फेयर स्किन कलर ओके सो नाउ व्हाट आर द पॉसिबिलिटीज दैट वी हैव द पॉसिबिलिटीज यू सी सो इफ यू पुट देम एज गैमेट्स एंड फ्रॉम द चेकअप बोर्ड फ्रॉम द पनेट स्क्वायर from this punnett square what we can get as a idea to give you an idea that the extreme features of the combination of these alleles let's imagine capital a capital a capital b capital b capital c capital c this is one particular genotype possible with the help of this three different genes with the respective dominant alleles which give rise to dark skin color so a person with capital a capital a capital b capital b and capital b capital c would be carrying a darkest skin color see similarly a person with small a small a small b small b small c small c would have a fairest a lightest skin color but in the population the number of individual carrying this darkest skin color and fairest would be the least you see the number of individuals in the population in the y axis clearly see that this is very low number of individuals in the population and the maximum number of individual in the population belong to the median between the darkest skin tone and fairest skin tone and they should carry capital a small a capital b small b capital c small c they will carry this particular genotype heterozygous for every single gene that will give us the skin tone which is moderate not too dark not too fair so this punnett square gives us this data you see that six out of you know so much individuals follow this particular pattern so zero follows this whitest pattern or something like this what zero or one or something they follows it maximum individual followed is this three You see, the moderate skin color. Then little, little fair, little darker. Still in the good chunk, and then the least one are present, the least number in the population. So the polygenic inheritance. If you plot the data of polygenic inheritance, like this in a in a graph, we'll always find a bell-shaped curve forming, where the extremities of the genotypes and the resultant phenotypes are found. in both the extremes the fairest skin tone darkest skin tone and the median would be the skin tone of the maximum individual in the population so that's why in a human population maximum individual has a an average skin tone not very fair not very dark in india also height you talk about height of individuals in our india you'll see there is a average height that height is maintained by most of the people in the population not so very tall people there are limited and also very short people are also very limited in this population for intelligence it is the same situation for eye colors the same situation that's what polygenic inheritance is and why this is maintained not very simple to answer but there are multiple factors first of all the interaction of different genes and their allele but it also has impact from environment and environmental parameters okay so that's the difference between multiple allele inheritance and polygenic inheritance in reality polygenic inheritance is the one where multiple alleles in reality are interacting when in multiple allele inheritance there is only two allele but their cumulative impact shows different results so that's all about it that's all about the idea of polygenic inheritance and multiple alleles If you like this video please hit the like button share the video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you